Welcome to the 2019 Zambia Girls in ICT Indaba being held at the Mulungushi International Conference Center. The mood is exciting, so many people and so many fun activities taking place. Girls from different schools and sectors of the community were here to attend this special day made just for them. The day was also attended by different delegates across the country. Guests of honor present were the Minister of Transport and Communication, Honorable Brian Mushimba, Minister of Gender, Elizabeth Piri, and His Royal Highness from the Muwezwa Chiefdom of Itezi Tezi. It is important for me to state that since time immemorial, young women and girls have not been given equal treatment as men in terms of opportunities at various spheres of society. This realization has led to a number of key interventions and steps being taken at both local and global levels with a view of readdressing the situation. In fact, this has led to the introduction of girls in ICT's initiatives as one way of trying to bridge the long-standing status quo. What's happening in the workplace now, we are not just looking for somebody who got six points and somebody who got a distinction when they graduated at university. We look for people who can work as a team. So if you're so, so intelligent, but you can't work with others, you cannot respect other people's space, and um, you want to behave the way you, can, you, you behave at home, you'll find as, uh, when you go sometimes for interviews nowadays, there's an aptitude test, and there's some questions that will set you up to be able, and they will, they, your results, your, your responses, will be able to assist the employer, assess your personality. Okay, we're, this is the time now when we're supposed to discuss in our groups all those questions. So what I'm going to do is quickly get the questions and we can do it in our groups. The girls had an opportunity to meet different experts dominating in different fields, from arts to computer science and programming and biotechnology. These are different types of ARVs that people take. I'll give you an example of a few regimens that is uh, the medication that the HIV AIDS patients take. For instance, this is an adult uh, medication. You take this in the morning, all these three. In the evening, you take all these three. All these three. For the rest of your life, every day. Every day you have to take these drugs for you to suppress the virus. Now imagine how that is. You know, people forget. It's inconveniencing. Sometimes you just don't want to take because you don't want other people to see you taking them. So there are all those uh, disturbances and all those inconveniences problems. and problems that people have. And then they, don't, they end up not taking at all and there's viral loads, shoots, non-adherence. That's the problem that I identified to the HIV AIDS patients. So what, did we, what do we do then? I came up with a patch a transdermal patch which looks like this so a transdermal patch is a medicative adhesive tape that you put on the skin preferably on the shoulder and then it releases the drug slowly for as long as a week so instead of taking the oral drugs every day you know every day it's inconveniencing and all that you just stick the patch you can bath with it you can swim with it you don't need to remove it every time you're going to bath no you just leave it there and then after a week, you remove and change, you put a new one. So that's the innovation that I came up with using this technology. The technology that is here, I won't say much about it because you won't understand. But what I want you to know is that there is, the drug is embedded somewhere here and then it uh, gets released using a special type of matrix, uh, a controlled release system. And then on top here, it's uh, the, ad the adhesive uh, tape is uh, waterproof you can that's what makes it uh, that's what makes you be able to use it swimming when bathing and swimming so that's the technology that i use the girls had lots of fun 
they had the chance to see women innovating new ideas and making a difference. So my name is Chisenga Muyoya and I'm a co-founder of Asikana Network. Um, and we are an initiative that increases the participation of women and girls in technology and we do this through um, working with girls all over Lusaka in different parts of Zambia in building their skills and uh, exposing them to the space. So today um, the girls are learning how to build a small game uh, using a tool called Scratch where they're able to drag and drop and do different things but understand what the basic foundations are of a programming language. The world at the moment the nation and everything we do at the moment has gone digital. Education has been digi digitalized. The industries where our children are supposed to, to go for work have been digitalized. So my passion is to ensure that I motivate the girls to venture and develop interest in ICT because I know that with ICT skills they are going to easily find themselves into education, they are going to fit okay, into everything which is happening at the moment, that is academic wise as well as industry wise. I'm Kasweka Malenji from the UNDP team. I'm part of the Governance and Gender and we're here for the Girls in ICT Day and we're having an endeavor with UNDP, Zikta and our partners and I would like to just talk about how I think ICT is very important for girls especially now that we live in a world where communications and technology is one of the biggest sectors out there and everything is done through technology and through communications like social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, engineering, computer development, software development, computer engineering, all these things are very big sectors in the world that we live in today. So I think it's very important for girls to get involved in ICT and not sit back and wait for the guys or the men to do everything for them, but they should also be part of setting the code, leading the code, creating the code, and being the leaders of all these ICT sectors. So I think it's really important that we should pull our girls as well. Not leaving behind the girls and also not saying we completely get rid of the boys, no, but together, equality, that we should do this together. My name is Aka Kandela Kandepo from Agents of Change. So my question is for Madam Susan. How did you handle the change in the environment in your childhood? Um, I was quite confused. It was very confusing because every so often we, we would move towns, I would have to change schools, maybe go from a good looking school to a not so good looking schools because we moved to some small towns. And uh, that did quite have an effect on me. I didn't learn very early how to make lasting relationships because every so often I had to move. But I think it also helped me because it meant that each time we moved, I needed to find my feet really quickly. So going into a new environment, I also then have to learn to find my feet as quickly as I can be. So I think it helped me, but I think all of it is down to just being positive about whatever environment I find myself. So my role here today is to inspire the young people that they can too have a future in ICT. Not just in ICT, but in any area of expertise that they choose to take up. They have a future. It's really up to them. They have immense opportunities and possibilities that never existed. The world is opening up, the ICT sector is forever changing and diversifying, which gives them the opportunities that they have. Here's what a few girls in attendance had to say about the day and what they learned. Names are Musha Kangwatembo and when I came here I didn't think I would leave with as much knowledge as I've obtained because this um, program has basically taught me that females are underrated and I think we shouldn't be because my main inspiration here was Mom Susan Mulikita. For instance, she's the CEO of Liquid Tech, and it's the only company in Zambia that has an HQ of six. So it inspired me to tell me that I can do better, I can do as much as possible because girls, we do have the power basically, and we have the ability to do anything we can, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So I think this program has taught me a lot actually, and it only didn't deal in ICTs, but then it inspired me to do more and actually focus on my studies. My name is Claire Zulu. I'm at the Zambia Girls in ICT Indawa, 
and I'm having so much fun. It's really educative. We're learning how girls can succeed in the ICT sector because it's usually male dominated. It's teaching young ladies or girls to be more active in the ICT technological and communicational staff. One very important aspect that was mentioned in the conference was cyberbullying. Cyberbullying in the past few years has been on the rise and these girls were educated on how to safely approach it and pass this knowledge to friends and family. So you all need cybersecurity in your lives. Banking systems need cybersecurity. The government needs cybersecurity. The educational sector needs cybersecurity. You cannot build a mansion without putting up a war fence. You will get robbed. I'm Mangala Manga and I've attended the Zambia Girls in ICT in Daba and I got myself a certificate, yay! And me attending this Indaba was really inspiring for me because I'm a girl who wants to really be part of the ICT sector and I feel that girl child inclusion in ICT and in STEM, which is science, technology, engineering and mathematics is really important because our input would be really vital. Um, I was cyberbullied for a period of maybe a week or two on Facebook and it all started on a Sunday afternoon when I logged into my Facebook and I saw the post in my newsfeed. I was heartbroken. I couldn't believe that after all that effort I had put in and everything that I had done to, ha to gain my achievement and there would still be people to criticize me. But it's, I wouldn't consider my cyberbullying as a really, it was a bad space for me, but it gave me motivation, a push to grow. The girls debated on different issues concerning girls and women belonging to a male-dominated community. If you buy a phone, obviously you're supposed to be buying airtime, and that's used on a daily basis. Everyone here with a cell phone, Count the data that you've bought, count the airtime that you've bought throughout. How much are you spending? And we say it's affordable. Yes, but I'm supposed to have income for me to do that. I just can't go get a phone for free. Or to be the best version of yourself, when you know better, you do better. So these are some of the few points that I've gotten. And also from the financial digital. They had the chance to express themselves in different ways, through drama, poems, and music. My name is Chief Tennis Muezwa One. I say Chief Tennis Muezwa One because I'm the first Chief Tennis in the Chiefdom. I'm passionate and happy that I've been able to attend Zambia Girls in ICT in Daba. I'm always happy when there's some development coming in our Chiefdom. And as a champion of he for she, as a champion against teenage marriages and early pregnancies, anything to do with the girls, I always embrace it. Because I know if they come and do ICT, then there will be development in my chiefdom. Here at the Girls in ICT in Daba, and I attended this, of course, so that I can find a way of disseminating the the information that is coming their way also to the masses through my creativity and um, so far so good because uh, I also am inspired by the, the speakers that are speaking, that were speaking on this day. You will encounter people who have you all sized up, your capabilities and limitations before you even utter a single word simply because you're a woman. How do you combat it? Firstly, you accept it. It's not fair. It's not right, but it is what it is. Perhaps in future, our society will change, will change and will be more accommodating of women, of women in such roles. But at the moment, it is what it is, and it must be accepted if you're to fight it. To top it all off, the girls were treated to a performance by Sheffy187. It was a great day indeed, and we are certain that these girls were motivated and will certainly make a change. So that's it from us. Until next time, keep burning that fire, girls.